I'm Joe White and this is the story of the blood red hair. Back before I was born, before you were born too, indeed back in the early Victorian age, Ellesmere was like most rural towns. Beautiful and picturesque, largely untouched by the industrial era and with a close-knit community. Children would often play in the woods, women would natter and men would work in the fields surrounding the town. And any community like this is hit hard by a tragedy. A tragedy like that which occurred on a cold winter's eve just as the snow was beginning to fall. A young girl had failed to return home after playing in the woods and her mother had searched in these very woods for her but to no avail. She could not find her darling daughter and it came a time she had to return home for she had other young children to care for. On word of this reaching the town people organised a mass search for the next day when there was more light. And when the sun rose, men, women and children searched in the woods for that little girl. But any footprints they could have followed had been covered by overnight snow and they did not even find a trace of her. The next summer, children were out playing in the woods and they saw a most peculiar sight. There were leaves on one of the trees that had red veins. They had never seen that before. And they ran back to their mothers and told them, but their mothers did not believe this children's myth. And then the autumn came and with it, the fruit began to appear. And some pears were speckled red. And the children grabbed their mothers and took them and showed them the fruit. And well, then the mothers believed the children and the women told their husbands. And the men, knowledgeable from their work, had a theory as to what was making those leaves red. It could be a metal, it could be treasure. And so they dug and they dug and they dug. And soon their spades clinked as they hit something they hit something solid and they dusted off as quickly as they could but it was no treasure they found but child's bones and after finding those bones the people of the village went to get that woman but she saw them coming and she ran and she ran and she ran through the woods but she could not outrun them they brought her down with a blow to the head, they dragged her unconscious body and tied it to a tree. And the next day, they threw her body with weights tied on to keep it underwater into the mere so she could never rise again. Some say she did it, others she did not. Whatever you believe, in this mere is where she does rot.